Hey, new video, let's go. I've been looking for you. Hey guys, so today's video is about the ship's accommodation. Every time I introduce myself to somebody as a sailor and I tell them that I work on a ship for over six months at a stretch and I live here for more than six months at a stretch, I get asked about what kind of accommodation we have on board ships. What my cabin is like, do I have to share a cabin with somebody, are there dormitories, uh, are there common toilets, do you have a gym? I get asked a whole bunch of questions about what ships are like and what the accommodation is like. And there are also misconceptions. People believe that a passenger ship and a cargo ship have very similar accommodations. That's not true. There's a very, very big difference. Passenger ships carry people as cargo. We carry commodities. So passenger ships and cargo ship accommodations have been built differently. Uh, I'm going to show you that in this video. So basically, there are two stairways that connects the accommodation together. Uh, we have the outer stairway, which gives you access from any particular deck to enter the accommodation. And we have the inner stairway, which is basically inside the accommodation. Basically, I'm on the bridge. I've explained what the bridge is in another video. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to leave the accommodation, leave the bridge using the outer stairway. After that, we're going to go all the way down to the bottom deck of the accommodation, enter the accommodation from there, then use the inner stairway and make our way all the way back up. So you can get an entire overview of what the accommodation is like. Yeah. Also, we're going to have a bunch of tours coming up in the future. I still have to do the engine room tour, the main deck tour. So definitely like, subscribe, share for more. And uh, I'm going to see you in the next video. I hope you enjoy this one. Let's get into it. So the kind of ships that I work on are called chemical carriers. These are specialized ships, extremely small in size when you compare them to container ships, bulk carriers, car carriers, larger tankers and other dry cargo ships. The reason for this is because these ships carry extremely dangerous cargo and there's a capping limit on the size of these ships which is put on them for safety requirements. And of course, smaller the ship means smaller the accommodation. But for its size, it's really not bad. The ship's accommodation is split into various decks. We're going to start from the bridge deck, head down and make our way up as I'm showing you in the diagram. It's the ongoing maintenance that keeps the accommodation in ship shape. What you're looking at is the funnel deck, which is also a makeshift basketball court. This is the lifeboat area and a rank-based muster station for everyone to assemble in case of an emergency. Firefighting equipment is located on every deck. Garbage storage and segregation area. We take safety of the environment very seriously. This is the air conditioning room which houses all the equipment and machinery to keep the temperatures more than ambient within the accommodation. Hence, keeping us comfortable at all times. This is the rescue boat which is always ready to be launched in case anyone falls overboard. Oh yeah. The accommodation of the ship is also called the superstructure. <laughs> Guess you can see why. We're now at the back of the ship on the main deck, also known as the poop deck or the aft. It's time to enter the accommodation. <laughs> That's John. He's the baby on board, the youngest crew member we have on this ship. This is the officer mess room. Our dining table has special seat allotted to all of us based on our ranks. We also have a recreational area with a PlayStation fitted where people can sit and gather during their free time. This is the galley and the chief cook. Yeah, dinner is almost ready. On the other side is the crew mess room. Oh yeah, it's movie time. Meet the motorman. He's one of the best barbers you can have on board a ship. He's the fourth engineer. And you're also looking at the mess boy. We're now heading to the A deck. In the first room that you're seeing here is the master's office. This is exactly where port authorities and the agent come meet the captain. The chief engineer and the chief officer's offices follow. Next, we're going to look at the cargo control room. We have the cargo system panel and the ballast system panel right here. Emergency power telephone, 
oil watering equipment, ballast screens and cargo screens. We have all the information that we need to run a successful cargo operation right in this one location and we also have an overview of the entire deck from here. This is the hospital and the medical supply locker. I make the inventory for the cabinets but the captain is the actual doctor. The Maritime Labour Convention has pushed ship owners to provide the ships with exercise equipment and gyms. So there you have it, our very own tiny gym with weights, a multi-gym and a treadmill. On every deck you'll find enlarged versions of various safety plans for easy access and for the seafarers to understand where important equipment are located at all times. We're heading up to the B deck now. Along the stairway you have glow in the dark safety signs showing you your escape route in case of an emergency. Muster lists and emergency duties are found on every deck. This deck mainly consists of cabins and people staying here. It's purely residential. Emergency escape breathing devices and the Wi-Fi router which is the most important part of every deck. We're now heading to the captain's deck. This deck mainly consists of officer cabins and the captain and the chief engineer's master cabins. I'm going to show you one of the spare cabins that we have which is kept for owners, superintendents and other shore base visitors. Multiple routers and power connections. We're now going to head up to the bridge deck like I promised. The door that you're looking at is a self-closing fire door and that's exactly what the red sticker on the door indicates. This is the bridge door. The bridge is restricted to only officers and crew. Oh yeah, no cameras allowed. Meet Rodrigo. He's my buddy and the third mate. He helps out with a lot of my videos that I make here. When you look at a ship and you look at the size of the accommodation in comparison to the entire ship, you'll notice that it's pretty tiny. That's because just like any other business, the product is the most important. And to be able to load more of the same product on the same size of ship means you have to reduce the size of everything else. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. The one thing I need you all to remember at any given point in time when you're looking at my videos is that there's nothing hard and fast. Every ship is very, very different to the other. I work on specialized ships known as chemical tankers, which are really, really tiny ships on the overall. If you work on ships like container ships, car carriers, uh, VLCCs, they, those ships are way bigger than what my ships are, which basically means the accommodations are bigger and they could even be a lot better. The ships that I work on are small. They carry extremely dangerous cargo and uh, there's a reason why the size cannot be bigger for the ships because there's an industry requirement for that and the accommodation is pretty okay for the size that we have. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you got a little bit of an insight on what the accommodations on chemical tankers are like. In the future, if I do sail on a different kind of ship, I'd love to show you and give you a tour of the accommodation on those ships. Stay tuned for more videos. I'll be coming up with an engine room tour very soon and I'll also be showing you the cargo operations in the near future. Have a good one and stay tuned for more.